everyone and welcome to my channel On The Hook Crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Today is Happy Monday and this video is going to be a little bit different from some of my others although not too terribly different. There won't be a giveaway and I will encourage you to um, go to the link either in the description box right now or at the link I'll put it at the end of the video. Uh, for the 8,000 subscriber giveaway, I'm giving away eight gifts and I want you to participate. So if you'll go there and watch the videos, find out how to enter the giveaway and you'll be in the running for the giveaway, which will be announced on Monday, September 21. You may be a winner too. You never know. What I'm wearing today is the Titmouse sweater. It is a crocheted sweater with fingering weight yarn. This is the yarn. I still have one hank of this left. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I think I bought five maybe. And it took three to make this and one I made in a scarf pattern from Knit Crate when the yarn originally came to me. But this is Knitology. Beautiful tit mouse. I love the colors in this. This is how it pools with a crochet and I'll stand up and let you see this. This is the Titmouse sweater pattern made with some lace stitches here and there. Um, it's, it's a very casual sweater. I wear it with blue jeans as you can see and it has a very nice neck. The neck is wide open and what I did there was then I filled in the neck where I needed to with some rows along the neckline and that way the, bringing the neck in just a little bit exactly where I wanted it to be and it's very very cool the the back of the neck is a little bit low but it's not that low I think I don't even think I decreased anything on the back but that's just the way it kind of fell I also blocked this because it is made from 75% merino wool 15% silk and 10% cashmere so it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn, and they still have this on the Knit Crate site. So if you're interested in buying any of this, uh, they still have some out there, and I don't think it's very expensive. It's Knitology Sheen, and the colorway, again, is Titmouse. I named my sweater Titmouse, too. You can find that on my Etsy shop. All these links will be in the description box below, so you don't have to write anything down, but um, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because they still have this yarn, and it is a glorious yarn to work with, and it's very, very soft and easy to wear. So I wanted to show you that today, and uh, kind of uh, every now and then bring out a sweater that I've already made, and you can uh, see how it looks. Now, I want to talk about a sweater that I have on the hook, and uh, I don't always have a sweater on the hook. Well, I usually do have a sweater on the hook, I should say. I'm making this with a K hook, 6.5 millimeter, the green clover hook. I love it, love it. And this is actually uh, some more Knit Crate yarn that came in a monthly subscription box, not sponsored by any of the people that I talk about today, no one. Um, this is called Pigment 34 Cotton 35 Linen 19 Lyocell and 11% Nylon, 351 yards on the hank. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. It's very color saturated. I will say, now that I've made the front of my sweater and I've, I've made this much progress on the back, I have about 8 inches on the back already crocheted and ready to go. And as soon as I get that finished, I will be sewing this sweater together. But I did finish the front and I wanted to show you this because this is made by the Millie's Lace pattern that came out last week. And I was actually in the process of making this while I was making the green one that is actually the sweater pattern that is out there on Etsy. This is the pigment sweater made from that same yarn there I just talked about. And a much wider neckline. If you'll notice it's sort of like the titmouse. It's just right about there. And if you put the shoulders up here where they go, this is a very simple sweater. The sleeves are crocheted into the, into the fabric. Now, my Millie's Lace came way down here. It came down below my elbow. These I made short sleeves and I'll probably put a very small edging on that. This is going to be a cooler sweater. Um, it doesn't come up very high and the sleeves are much shorter. And I made a different, uh, border at the bottom. It's not very fancy, 
but as you can see the neckline is heavily decreased so that it comes way out and I'll put a neckline band on this as large as I need it um, to make it comfortable on me but this is a very comfortable yarn I like it um, it's it's kind of loud <laughs> as you know this is a loud sweater right here but to wear it with jeans or black pants or something like that I think it'll be pretty or I could wear it under a blue jean jacket or a black jacket uh, that would be pretty to dress up so uh, I'll probably have to wear a tan tank top under this and I hope the next time I speak with you I'll be wearing this so that's my plan to finish this up so you can see what a wider neckline might look with the Millie's lace now the lace is still on the front let me show you that you may, you may not have noticed it but the lace is on the front it's not on the back and I took the lace up all the way almost to the top of the shoulder there you can see it um, but not the center piece of lace. The center uh, lace it stops right at the neckline. So I tried to um, be organized with my lace on this one, but um, you can make one just like this with a Millie's Lace pattern. And again, I'll put the link down in the description box for you. Now for the knitting portion of my show, I know you're saying knitting portion. What is that, Jeannie? Well, the knitting portion is I am trying to teach myself how to knit. It's not a very fast project, but I am, uh, I ordered some knitting needles and I wanted to just watch some YouTubes and work along with them. I've never knitted in my life. I don't know anything about knitting and um, hopefully I can get a little bit of advice from y'all and from, uh, I, I won't be seeing anybody. So I guess I'll just have to either get it from y'all or just keep watching YouTube videos and there are lots of them out there I'm sure I'll find one that clicks I haven't really done that yet but I did make a sample I don't know if you can see that it looks very weird and wonky but um, right in the center I did pretty well and then on the sides I was just all over the place look at that big hole right there <laughs> that's because I'm a crocheter and not a knitter and I'm going to figure it out because I've invested some money in my knitting needles and I did ask y'all for some advice and I took that advice because most of you said the Chai Gu needles were a good investment I saw it on YouTube I went out and looked at all the reviews and it seems like most people think that that is a very good investment for knitting needles and there's a large range of needles in this particular um, set that I bought. I bought the five inch needles because I felt like the four inch needles would be a little bit too short for my hand and I needed something bigger to hold on to. So now I'm using the 6.0 and that's what these are. I just grabbed them and put the little cord on there like it showed me how to and I did a little bit of knitting but this is a very first foray into knitting so I'm a definitely a crocheter because I can go a lot faster crocheting, but I would like to expand my horizons a little bit. So I'm going to teach myself to knit. I haven't even done a purl stitch yet. <laughs> I've only done a knit stitch, but I'm trying to learn it on the continental style because I feel like I need to go fast if I'm going to knit. I don't want to be swinging that yarn around all the time with the English method. If you knitters know what I mean, I'm sure you do. So I'm learning the Continental Method and there are several ways to do it. So I'm uh, experimenting with that and just wanted to show you that real quick. But this is the set that I received. Um, I just bought it on Amazon. It's the Chai Gu um, needle set, knitting needle set. This is what it looks like on the front. It looks like a pretty good set. It's got lots of um, extra um, cords that connect the needles and there are several sizes and there's some other things in there too as well. You can certainly go on the web and look at all the reviews. It's got, you know, lots of little things in here, but I like the, the compactness of the, the, um, the packet that it's in. It seems like a very nice uh, quality, very good quality. And I went ahead and spent the money on it. I think it was over $150, but I looked back at all my crochet needles that I bought over the years and I know I've spent two or three hundred dollars on crochet needles and also on Tunisian crochet needles with cords and all that. I've done all that so I thought if I'm going to learn to knit 
I really want to use really good products to do that with because it, as an example, if you want to learn to play the guitar and you buy the cheapest guitar that you possibly can and you save a lot of money and all that, you bring the guitar home, it doesn't stay in tune, it's hard to play, it, it just is not as easy to play as a really nice guitar. I don't mean a million dollar guitar, I just mean one that costs some money that you could save up for and buy a really nice guitar if you really want to learn to play guitar. So that's what I'm doing with my knitting. I want to learn to knit. It may take me a couple of years to really get good at it, but uh, I'm, I'm focusing on crochet. I'm not giving up my crochet. But I do want to spend a little time kind of working on my knitting skills. So that is my little foray into knitting. Now back to crochet. I do watch knitting channels. I will tell you that because there are so many and um, crochet channels are not that prolific. There are lots, but uh, there are a whole lot of knitting channels. And some people are easy to watch and some people are not. And I've honed it down to a few that I've subscribed to that I like to watch when I'm crocheting. <laughs> I'll be crocheting along and watching them knit. It's an interesting look into the world of knitting. And one YouTube channel that I watch is The Knot House, which is a hilarious name to begin with. This is their card that they sent me. I, I bought some yarn from there. They have a yarn shop up in Delaware. And the two ladies' names are Kathy and Heather. Um, one of them is the mom and one is the daughter. And it's really cute how they banter back and forth with each other. They're prolific knitters. They have lots of knitting the show. And they also have a beautiful yarn shop. And they show a lot of colors of their yarn. And it's all hand dyed and all that business. They order in from other companies that are hand dyed. And they also dye yarn themselves. So one day I saw a shawl made out of these two colors. And I thought about it. And I went back and replayed it. And I thought, you know, that would be beautiful done in crochet. And they were, of course, knitted theirs, but there's always room for crochet. So what I did was I ordered two hanks of this particular color, which is called Shipwreck. And this is a teal and brown together. Now, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful in person, and it is so soft. Let me see if they... It's 100% superwash merino. Quite gorgeous, and it is a fingering yarn so it's tiny tiny there are 438 yards on the hank again this is called uh, shipwreck and it is on the knot house yarn site and you can find them i'll put a link to their their shop down in the description box so i balled it up and this is what it looks like wound on a ball this is so beautiful i really like it Teal and brown are so beautiful together. And this is the brown. I have um, rolled this into a ball already. And it's just kind of a tonal brown. It's called Pirate's Wheel. Pirate's Wheel. And it is beautiful. Let me get it up there so you can see it. It's also a fingering weight yarn. And they paired these two yarns together like that. And the shawl itself was made out of this color. And the edging was made out of this color. And I thought, perfect for crochet. What can I do with that? So I sat down and came up with a pattern. I'm not through with it yet. I'm hoping to finish it this week. But this is what it looks like. This is the shawl. And I, I really am loving it. I, I think because I spent some time figuring out how to increase the shawl so that it would ruffle at the bottom. I really like that look. Now, I don't have it big enough. I, it's not obviously not big enough. This is what it looks like so far. This is the top, right around the neck. It's a little bit tighter there, and then I've used some post stitches, some trebles, some double trebles, and then I've increased it around the bottom so that it's a little bit of a ruffle down there. And it's an organized scarf. It's fairly easy to make. It's not going to be difficult. And what I'll do is I've used this much of the hank. I have this much left. And then I have a whole nother hank. But I'm going to make this one fairly large. I'm going to finish this ball. And I may start on the other ball as well before I uh, come up with the edging. And it's going to be a fancy edging. It's going to be beautiful. And I can't wait to finish it. I want to finish it this week. I hope that I can. But I have my um, 
pigment sweater that I'm working on as well. So those are my two major projects this week. I won't be knitting probably anymore for a while. I'm going to let that sink in what I did, which wasn't the best, but I want to let that sink in and then I'll go back to it and learn how to purl. So it's going to be a long process for me and uh, it may be a while, but anyway, that's my little foray into um, knitting YouTube videos that I watch quite often. My next segment is to talk about a Malabrigo box that I received from Knit Crate. Not sponsored, of course, but this is a beautiful, beautiful yarn and it's called Washed It. Washed or Washed It. I don't know why they spelled it with a T, but um, they did. And it's 200 yards on the ball. It's worsted weight and it's 100% merino super washed. So uh, this is what it looks like balled up. Beautiful, beautiful purples and yellows, a little bit of orange in there. And this is what it looks like on the hank. So gorgeous, so, so gorgeous. Now, I liked it so much when I received this and I, I usually do with my Malabrigo. Um, I really, really like it. And I, sometimes I try to go out and find more of it. And I found two other hanks. So I have four hanks of this particular one and it's 210 yards on the hank. So I have 840 yards of this worsted weight, which is ample to make a sweater. So I'm excited about that. That will be a sweater when I uh, get around to it. But it came in this uh, nice knit crepe box, but inside the box was a little extra. And that extra was a bag, which I actually needed because I have so many whips going on. <laughs> but this bag says, I'm ready for whatever life throws at me, but really hope it's yarn. <laughs> That's from Knit Crate. I just thought that was really cute. And I'm using it to hold my Malabrigo yarn. Next on my program, I want to talk about some yarn that I have been buying. Um, besides the Malabrigo, that came in a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to show that to you when I received the balance. So I have four hanks of that, as I said. Now I want to show you some yarn that I have received from other companies and besides the Knot House, I ordered that yarn. I ordered um, some yarn from Knit Picks it's online. I've never, I don't think they have a physical store, but they do have lots and lots of yarn. And I wanted to show you some colors in the City Tweed, which is a um, yarn that I made a pattern from last year. And it was made from a kind of a yellow uh, City Tweed in worsted size. Well, I saw that they had DK weight, and I'm kind of concentrating on DK um, for a couple of sweaters. I'd like to make a couple of sweaters. And I wanted to see what the colors were. You can look online and say, gee, I really like that color, and not really know exactly what it looks like. So I ordered six balls, one each, to see the colors that they offered and see if I really like them. And then I may order some more yarn in those colors. So I want to show these to you. I don't know if the camera will pick up the nuances in the colors, but I want to show these to you. These are all Knit Picks um, City Tweed DK Weight, 123 yards on each ball, 123. So it's made from 55 Merino Wool, 25 Superfine Alpaca, and 20% Donegal Tweed, and it's a size 3 weight, a DK weight, hand wash dry flat. So I want to show that to you first. This is the label. This is what it looks like. City Tweed on nitpicks.com. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored by anybody. This is the color Snowshoe. It is a, uh, a kind of an off-white tweed. Very, very beautiful. I really like it. And the nice thing about this is I don't have to go down and use my Swift and Ball Winder <laughs> to wind it up. I can just pull it right from the center. So it's really nice to order this. I, I like the City Tweed and I'll be making something out of this this winter. The next color I want to show you is the color Grove. This is a brightish green, but it has a lot of olive in it. It's not extremely bright like fluorescent green. It's just a beautiful green with uh, a brown tone in it. So that is a green tweed and that's called Grove. Another color I'm really leaning toward because I love this color, it's called Romance. It is a, a kind of a pinkish red color, 
just gorgeous. This is one of my favorites right here. I might have to order um, some more of this and make a sweater from it, but that's called Romance. This one is a little bit too pink for me. I, it didn't look that pink on the web, but this is called Primrose. It's not a bright pink and it's not a baby pink. It's just a beautiful brownish pink. I really like it. I don't know if I'd want to make a whole sweater from it, but I did order it and I, you know, I've got it. So now I don't know what I'll do with it. I'll <laughs> do something with it. And then this is called Snow Bank. Not, not like this one. This is the first one I showed you. It's called Snow Shoe. This is Snow Bank and that's a much whiter, lighter color than this color. You see the difference there. This one has much more brown in it and the Snow Bank has uh, a much lighter color background. So that's really pretty. I like those two colors actually. Another thought I had to use these other colors would be as some color work in a crochet sweater and maybe make uh, from the bottom up or top down make a sweater with these colors mixed in as little stripes and I thought that would be pretty in a kind of a neutral colored sweater so I really like these colors I wanted to show them to you because out of all the colors they were my favorites they might not be yours they probably have 20 or 25 colors in this particular DK City Tweed. So I wanted to show those to you. Now I did order a sweater quantity of several colors and I want to show you these as well. This, these were on sale. That's why I ordered so much. Um, this is called Habanero. It's a brown, make sure that gets focused. Oh, there it is. Um, this is a brown, uh, kind of a rust color almost. It's very warm. It's a beautiful tweed. It's City Tweed as well. And I ordered a sweater quantity of that. And I'm set for the winter time. I probably won't be ordering any more yarn, she says. All right, this is called Kelp. Beautiful, beautiful color. I ordered a sweater quantity of that. I just had to have it. This is a kind of a, almost a teal color, but it has some green and a little bit of olive kind of mixed in there. It's, it's a different color. Um, I thought it was interesting, so I ordered eight balls of that, and that should be plenty to make a sweater. The color I ordered in sweater quantity is the um, Obsidian, which is a charcoal, dark charcoal, really pretty, oh, so neutral and beautiful. And I could actually do some color work with one of these in there. I could do, you know, it yeah, goes with a lot of things because it's a neutral. But this is called uh, obsidian o-b-s-i-d-i-a-n obsidian beautiful color and i ordered a sweater quantity of that so i'll be a busy girl this winter they were on sale so i consider that a pretty good buy and also buying the single uh, balls that gives me a good idea of what those colors look like for the future i also watch expression fiber arts and many of you do too as well and uh, Chandy on that channel has some beautiful patterns and gorgeous yarns and every now and then I order a yarn from her and I couldn't resist this one. It's called Flame and Fog. There are two hanks of yarn in this particular kit and it's a kit she sent out and with it came this really nice pin. It's maple leaf. Kind of gets you in the mood for fall. Isn't that pretty? It's an enamel pin. Very, very nice quality. And I might wear that on the sweater or I might put it on a project bag or something like that. But the two colors in this particular um, kit were called Foggy Forest. And that is a combination of some kind of uh, jewel tones, beautiful pink and gray. Uh, and it also has a little bit of bling on it. I don't know if you can see that, but some of the... Uh, little bling fibers you can see every now and then. There, it doesn't have a heavy bling like the Knit Crate yarn that I ordered. It had a fancy look to it. It was called Sugared Sport. That's it. This is called Foggy Forest and it is 65% merino wool, 25% nylon, 15% stellina and that would be the bling in there. You don't know if you can see that. And there are 439 yards on the ball. That's big, but it's also a fingering weight yarn. And you have to, you can hand wash it and lay it flat to dry. The other color is called Winding Autumn River. This is what she calls shimmer fingering. 
Let me be sure the other one is. Yeah, Shimmer Fingering. This is the blue, navy blue, some other beautiful colors in there. And it was beautiful in the hank, and I, I went ahead and balled it up because I thought I might want to use it right away, but I probably won't. I wish I had left this in the hank so you could see it a little bit better. But the two balls together is what she had in a, I believe it was a, a shawl, and it was beautiful, beautiful. I just saw that was really pretty. So I bought these two from her because I like to give her the business, and um, I, I like her videos. They're very, very good. Her tutorials are very good. And she talks about beautiful yarns. And so uh, if you go on her website, you'll see all these gorgeous yarns. And she takes pictures from nature. And she matches the colors of the yarn in, uh, to the colors in the nature photos. And they turn out so beautiful because there's nothing more beautiful than nature itself. So um, that is what I bought from expression fiber arts i don't have a plan for it yet it, it may be a shawl i'll have to see now back to knit crate i ordered some yarn as a um, member of the knit crate subscription box group and every now and then they have what they call a double down and y'all a lot of y'all know about that where they will offer the yarns that have come in the crates at a very low price and when that happens, I just go out there. Sometimes if I really like a yarn, I will buy a sweater quantity of it. And that way I have it in my stash. Well, what I did was I ordered a sweater quantity of one I didn't have in my stash already from the Knit Crate box. But I did have the type of yarn that it was. This is called the Vitalana Linen Jewel. And if you're a member of the Knit Crate subscription box group, you would have gotten some of this probably last month, I think it was, maybe the month before. It's a beautiful summer yarn. It's a fingering weight yarn, and it's so beautiful. I love the pink, and this is called sandstone. This is a very pinky color, but it's not screaming pink. It's just a very muted pink, and I thought that was a nice color, so I ordered a sweater quantity of that. I may not even make it up till next summer, but I will have it in my stash so that when the time comes, I'll be able to make something beautiful out of that. Now, the uh, pigment that I'm using for the orange sweater that I talked about at the beginning of the video is the same uh, yarn as this. This is called, the colorway is this, is Haze. It's the same yarn, it's the Interlock yarn, Audine Wools. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. And um, again, it's called Haze, H-A-Z-E. And it's a very pretty, kind of purple and white. It's not a very strong color, it's just a very light purple and white mixed together and that would make a beautiful sweater as well. So I bought a sweater quantity of that, which is three hanks in my case. Usually I can get away with that. And then I bought three hanks of this, which is the same. It's the Interlock and the Colorway Beaches and this is the neutral color that they sent out, but I didn't get this one. I got the pigment, which is the orange one. So, uh, and I may have been getting those mixed up with another box, but anyway, this is the uh, cotton and linen, uh, 34 cotton, 35 linen, 19 lyocell, 11% nylon, 351 yards on the ball, and it's also a fingering weight yarn. Very pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. You can double that, too, to make a scarf from... Um, which is what I'm doing with this scarf actually that I showed you earlier in the in the show. This is doubled fingering so it goes very very fast and I'm using a, a large hook with that as well. I think I'm using a K hook with that so it goes really quickly. You may already know this but I'm using that as a double the fingering weight. I pull from the center because when I roll this up I make sure that I know where the center piece is. It doesn't get um, disappear down in the middle. I hold it out so that I can pull on it and use the yarn from there and then I pull from the outside as well. So I can double a fingering weight scarf or sweater and use one ball at a time. So that makes it easier than you have two balls rolling around on each other. It's easier to manage one ball that way. So that's what I'm doing with this particular sweater. I'm pulling from the outside and the inside of that ball of yarn. Well, that's all the yarn that I bought. Now, I do have a knit crate box that I wanted to show you real quick. This is the Malabrigo box that comes every quarter from Knit Crate. I just love it. I, I, I really, it's almost like a splurge for me. Really like the yarns that they send out in this. And they had a little extra in here 
this month, this quarter, it says sip one, stitch one, repeat from, and it has a crochet hook and a knitting, a pair of knitting needles. Imagine that. Isn't that cute? Anyway, it's a little water bottle or something. I may use this on my next trip. And then in the box, beautiful, beautiful yarn from Malabrigo. This is called Machita. It's 100% Merino Superwash, and it's 420 yards on the ball. And I believe it's fingering weight, looks like it. Um, it's really tiny, but it's beautiful. Another way you could ball this up on your Swift and your ball winder or by hand, and then pull from the top and the outside. And that way you could make a scarf with one hank. I haven't even used a whole hank to make this scarf yet. I'm using two layers of fingering. So uh, I believe that one hank would do it. So if you go out to a website and you see a beautiful hank and you go, oh, I really need two or three of those, you really don't. If you want to make a shawl, you can do it with one hank of yarn. And I'm going to show you when I get finished with this how much yarn I actually use. Now I have two hanks of that, um, the major color here, but I may not dive into that second one. I might, but I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll see how big it is because I do want to make it kind of large. But this is an absolutely gorgeous yarn. Now, they also sent the silk to match it. This is a 50 gram ball, which is half of this. It's a 50 gram ball called a mini on most of those websites. They call these minis. And look at the colors in that. Oh my goodness. And it's really, really soft. It's made from 100% mulberry silk. I don't know what mulberry silk is, but it's quite beautiful, I have to say. And I will put those two together. I think I'll probably make a, an edging out of the silk and the shawl out of the main yarn. Now this also comes with a booklet that you can make um, their patterns with this particular yarn and this is the crocheted shawl pattern that they have on here. Can you believe that? They're really concentrating on crochet because a lot of us love yarn too just like knitters do. So these are the two patterns that are in the book. This is the crocheted pattern which is quite beautiful and this is the knitted uh, shawl pattern as well. And there's some other things in here too, but um, I wanted to show that to you because the crocheted shawl is on the front of the magazine. Isn't that great? They used to completely ignore us, but now they've kind of taken us on. And uh, I think it's great because uh, they are recognizing that a lot of people crochet only. And a lot of people crochet and knit too as well. But, uh, and I hope to be one of those people. <laughs> in the future. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I hope you've enjoyed my kind of my little haul video. I don't like calling them that. I like to call these videos acquisition videos. And these are some of the most beautiful yarns I've ever ordered. I really love them. And um, I love big box yarns too, but these are uh, more expensive. And sometimes I like to spend a little bit more on a yarn and you might try it yourself. There is absolutely nothing wrong with big box yarns or yarns from other companies. I just wanted to try some of these, and I, since I used this last year, I wanted to try it again in the DK weight this year. And I said, I think, I think I said last year in one of my videos, I wanted to try the DK weight. I didn't even know it existed uh, until one of my subscribers told me that they had the DK weight out there as well. So I thought this year I would try a DK weight sweater, and uh, it's a little bit smaller. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the heavy weight that I used last year. So I hope you have a wonderful week and please be sure to sign up for the 8,000 subscriber giveaway. I'll put the link down here and there'll also be a, a link to it up here on the end of the video. And uh, the more the merrier, because uh, I'm giving away more than one gift. I'm giving away eight gifts. So your chances are really good that you might win something. So be sure to sign up for that and sign up for the community as well down in the description box. All you need to do is uh, spend five seconds signing up and you'll get first uh, notice of all my patterns and a special discount that is given only to the community when I release a pattern. So, so have a great week and join me next time to find out what's on the hook.